right in the heart of the Bible are some passages that are really uncomfortable. For the Colson Center, I'm John Stone Street. This is Breakpoint. The imprecatory psalms are among the hymns that were sung by the people of God. They're far removed from the current cultural conceptions we have of Christian niceness or a gentle Jesus. These are not the psalms of praise and thanksgiving to God for his goodness and mercy that we're used to. These are the psalms that call for God's mercy to be withheld, for his wrath to be unleashed against enemies. For example, Psalm 69 says, Pour out your indignation upon them. Let your burning anger overtake them. May their camp be a desolation. Let no one dwell in their tents. Psalm 83 declares, O my God, make them like whirling dust, like chaff before the wind. As fire consumes the forest, as flames set the mountains ablaze, so may you pursue them with your tempest and terrify them with your hurricane. And then there's Psalm 109. May his children be fatherless, his wife a widow. May his children wander about and beg, seeking food far from the ruins they inhabit. Most disturbing of all, Psalm 137. Written after the people of Judah had been conquered and enslaved by the Babylonians, the psalmist cries out, O daughter of Babylon, doomed to be destroyed, blessed shall he be who repays you with what you have done to us. Blessed shall he be who takes your little ones and dashes them against the rock. Now, we don't know what to do with these words. We wonder why these kind of psalms are even in the Bible. And if the author was an awful person, we ask ourselves how they fit with the self-sacrificing, loving God that we've come to know. Well, not everything contained in the Bible is, of course, prescriptive. Many of the passages that we struggle with are descriptive, describing evils or wrongs that took place. These passages, however, are hymns, even prayers of God's people. So in the case of imprecatory psalms, there's a lot of confusion. But at times when world events, such as Russia's invasion of Ukraine, shake us out of our moral lethargy, these kinds of cries for justice and wrath make a little more sense. We, too, become enraged. In just the last few weeks, the world has looked on in horror as Russian forces violated the peace with those they claimed were their brothers. Millions displaced, thousands now dead. And as Moscow becomes increasingly frustrated at its lack of success, its leaders have resorted to indiscriminate shelling and intentional targeting of noncombatants. It's right at these times to want justice and to want it now. It's right to weep at the horrors of human existence as Billie Holiday did with her mournful song about lynchings in the Jim Crow South, Strange Fruit. Passages like Psalm 88 describe the struggle to find hope in God and to lament the injustice in the world. Sometimes the only possible moral response is to appeal to God for his judgment against evildoers. Anger is a proper response to real evil in the world, a world that was created good. At the same time, we should and can pray that evildoers would see their sin and approach the throne of grace for forgiveness and salvation. After all, Paul was a persecutor of the church, yet he was saved, used by God to take the gospel across the Roman world. At the same time, just three chapters after Paul's salvation is described, another persecutor, Herod Agrippa, is struck down by God, and as the text colorfully notes, was eaten by worms. The same Jesus, who came gently riding a donkey into Jerusalem, will one day return to establish the new Jerusalem riding a war horse. And precatory psalms affirm our sense that there's real wrong in the world, and we're right to be angry about it. They speak of the psalmist's pain and their own realness and rawness. They remind us that God's not afraid of our anger. In fact, he too is grieved and angry at evil, born of the sin that we've committed against one another in his world. These psalms, these imprecatory words, remind us that we can come to God in our anger. We can ask that he do something about it. The rest of the Psalms, and the rest of the Bible for that matter, remind us that God is trustworthy. As Abraham said of God, will not the judge of all the earth do what is right? He will, and we can count on it. For the Colson Center, I'm John Stone Street with Breakpoint. Breakpoint.